Hello and welcome to the floor of my living room slash dining room slash kitchen. It's the room that we've been living in now, 13 weeks of lockdown, whilst the rest of our house has building work done to it. It's great, it's fine, it's not at all awful, especially in six of those weeks I've had a really bad back because I injured it and then I went to hospital. It's been an adventure. You may have seen my video, Baking in a Building Site, in which I baked in a building site, not clickbait. Look, I mean, I just love baking and I, we haven't had a kitchen for the last four months because of the building work and the pandemic and the thing and the... But you know what? That's not going to stop me because it's Pride Month, the end of Pride Month. It's still Pride Month though and I'm going to bake a rainbow cake. So thank you for joining me to celebrate Pride Month in cake form. And also to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Rainbow cake in a microwave, you say? Can it be done? Let's find out. So baking in a microwave is clearly avant-garde, innovative, visionary. You know what else is ingenious? Virtual private networks. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that allows you to surf the web safe and without barriers. It encrypts your data when you log on to public Wi-Fi, meaning that hackers can't gain access. Also, hide your IP address, meaning that you can log on as if you are in any other country in the world and watch programs that are available in that country and not in yours. Like a huge range of Grey's Anatomy style TV shows. My favourite thing about Surfshark is that you can use just one account across multiple devices, so that's your phone, your iPad, your laptop, your desktop, all of them. So not only can you watch fun things on YouTube, like John Oliver dismantling years and years of colonialism, but you also get an extra layer of security, keeping all of your passwords, photos and videos safe. Oh and sure, so you might not be that worried about hackers, that could seem like some kind of oblique reference to you. But a VPN doesn't only protect you from malicious data stealing, it also just stops tracking and phishing and malware and the stuff you didn't want from the internet. So just like surveillance and commercial targeting. With a VPN, there is no insecurity when you're banking online. Merely click the link in the description of this video and use the code JESSICA for 85% off Surfshark and three months extra free. And Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is really no harm in trying it. Well, hello! Yes, I do have a dress with a matching mask. In fact, I have many. They come from British Retro. People always ask me where these dresses are from. Um, uh, and now you can tell you where my mask is from. So, let's get to baking our rainbow cake while I tell you all about the fun I've been having recently during lockdown. And by fun, I mean excruciating pain. All right, we're gonna use a creamer method and we're gonna measure things based on the weight of the eggs because that's the way my grandmother did it. So I have all these colorings. And also these, they're silicon molds that you can put in the microwave or in a regular oven. Hopefully this will all be fine. It will all work out well. All right, so our eggs have been weighed 220. Those of you who are like, oh my God, Jessica's sitting up without the aid of cushions or on her bed. I know, we'll get to that in a minute. So obviously, because I can't handle sugar because obviously, like there's one thing my body could do, right? No. We are going to be using granulated sweetener. I highly recommend sucralose. It's the only one that does not taste like a rat died in your mouth. When cooking with artificial sweetener, just knock a zero off the end of all measurements. So instead of trying to put 220 grams worth of artificial sweetener into this cake, which I don't know whether that would kill you, but it would make you feel like you died. We're going to put 22 grams in. So I injured my back and I have absolutely no idea how. Not even in the sense of, oh, I was doing a sport and then was injured. No, I went to the toilet. I yelled, ow, on the way back. I walked into the room like, ah, oh. my wife was like, what happened? And um, I forgot in the two steps from my injury back into the room. So I don't remember how I was injured, but there we go. Apparently I was. And so for two weeks, I just kind of ignored it, which is what I tend to do. Something goes wrong with me, ignore it for two weeks. Pretty standard. I uh, started to lose sensation in my legs, which is not that out of the ordinary for me. All right, we're gonna put 220 grams of not real butter in there. So anyway, I started to lose sensation in my legs, which most people should probably panic about. But I have a condition called hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure palsies. But not only is a mouthful, it's also deeply annoying because it means that my nerves, when put under pressure of some kind, like if you lean on it, rest something upon it, uh, they paralyze. Palsy, it's in the name. And paralyzed doesn't just mean something that stops working, it could mean nerves on your skin as well, this attached sensation. Um, and also the nerves that carry signals and information up and down. All of your nerves, your nerves, basically. Annoying. And then I stopped being able to pee. 
more annoying. And not only that, when I was then reminded by my wife that I needed to pee, really hurt, like really hurt. Like someone was taking a red hot needle. And then once I had peed, it was like I'd been punched in the stomach. It was, it was bad, it was pretty bad, yeah. Kind of sucked, kind of sucked. So we went to A&E and they were like, mm, that does indeed sound worrying. Let's get an MRI and see whether your spinal column is being crushed by a herniated disc. Good to say it was not. So they're like, okay, so it must be your nerve. That means it's a neurology problem. Unfortunately, however, my local hospital doesn't have a neurology department. They don't have a neurology department. They have a neurologist that they share with other hospitals. I live in a city. It's a big city, okay? We don't have a neurology department. I got admitted to the renal ward, which is kidneys, if you don't know. And um, they're delightful, by the way. They got up to the renal ward at the Royal Sussex County Hospital. However, um, I was told that I could either stay in hospital for an indeterminate amount of time and see the neurologist when he next, but they didn't know when that could be. And it could be in a week's time. Or I could go home and see the neurologist when he was able to see me. Unsurprisingly, I did take the choice to go home. And waited for neurology to get in contact. It took a month to see the neurologist, during which time, excruciating pain. They were nice, they did give me some painkillers though, on the renal ward, but not, not much. <laughs> Not a lot of painkillers. A lot of time in bed, uh, fighting the people around me about how much I wanted to work. And they were like, no, you are not doing well. Please stop. You don't understand. Working just means a lot to me, okay? And I know that my job isn't saving the world or anything, but making my Instagram cohesive is, um, brings me joy. Also, uh, if you didn't know, dentists in the UK are self-employed and therefore do not get put on furlough, even though my wife wasn't working for three months and I felt a lot of pressure as the main breadwinner of the family. So I finally get to go and see the neurologist last Friday and I'll be honest, I was um, not doing well. I was at that stage where, and this may be a bit dark, so I apologise. If you don't want to hear something very dark, you should probably skip about 30 seconds ahead. I was in that bad place with pain where you kind of think if you got hit by a bus it wouldn't be the worst thing because then at least it wouldn't hurt anymore. And that's not a good thing to be thinking. So we went in to go and see this neurologist and I was just crying beforehand because I was so sure that he was gonna do some test on me or say that they'd run this other test and that the results were nothing or inconclusive and therefore I had nothing and just had to go home and deal with it or something like that and I just really really wanted and I should probably tell you that during my time on bed rest not only was I playing a lot of sims I was also watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy so I was crying because I wanted to go to the kind of hospital like they have in Grey's Anatomy where every episode is one person's problem and all these different doctors across all these different specialties talk to each other and find out what's wrong and then fix it. Or the person dies, that happens sometimes too. So I was so upset because I thought this was just gonna be some other faceless doctor that I would see once and he would be like, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know your condition. I've never heard of it and I don't care to learn about it. You don't have one of the five things I deal with. Goodbye. I wasn't even looking my best. You have to be looking your best right because otherwise they might just think you're not trying hard enough and you might not receive the medical care that you need i can't say for sure whether that's true or not it's just my own personal experience that when i look nicer i get treated better so we get called into neurology we go in it's a doctor i've never seen before he smiled at me and he was like i'm really sorry that i left you sitting out there for 20 minutes it's just that i've been trying to look through your file and it's a lot I was like, he was like, you seem to have a lot of different things wrong with you. <laughs> he was like, yes, it's all very baffling. And you have this condition that I've never heard of before. But he was in tree. And he was like, oh, so you have this, but you also have this. And I was like, yes. I know, I do, it's it's a thing. And he's like, oh, and you're also deaf? Yes, I know, and, and the different doctors are like, oh, why is she deaf? And I'm like, I don't care. All I care about is the fact that I am, and I have to deal with it. Oh, and then your eye doesn't work? I'm like, yeah, I know. Also a weird thing about me. Oh, and you have this and this? I'm like, yeah, I know. And he just went, how fascinating. You know what? I bet no one's ever properly looked at that, have they? Because you've probably seen a lot of different doctors about a lot of different things. But have you ever seen a doctor who's looked at everything all together? And I was like, are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Is this about to be a Grey's Anatomy moment? And you know what? It was. 
It was. He was like, this is fascinating. I would love to hear your entire medical history. We should get a coffee. I'm just so intrigued. He was like, I'm gonna sign you up as a new patient. I've decided, uh, I think, would you mind if I switched over care from your current neurologist to me so I can look at all of your different things together and see how they interlink and interact with each other. I was like, yes. Please do so. And, uh, and he was just marvelous. And he was like, you know, I see people all the time. They've been to all these different doctors and the different doctors, wow, was that almost perfect? It was. And the different doctors all say things like, oh, well, if that's not to do with me and if I can't find on this one test that it's this one thing, then you must be making it up. I have some experience of that. I'm really sorry about it. Let's fix that. And then he said something, I won't tell you what because, well, A, personal, B, triggering. So he said something and then I started to cry and then he realized that he hadn't really like meant to say it to make me cry, he just was explaining something. Anyway, I cried. And um, in all my years of seeing doctors, not one of them has ever reached their hand across the desk to me while I was crying. And he did. And, and he, he like patted my little hand and I was like, can you be my doctor forever? So yeah, <laughs> apparently I'm in love with a doctor now. It's new, also male, that's very new. I'm totally kidding, don't worry. I still very much love my wife. She is the only human being for me on the planet. And then the whole reason that I was there in the first place was for this back pain, which made my leg paralyzed, although it's kind of a bit better now. And also made me not know that I needed to go to the loo, although that's also kind of a bit better now. I've just been waiting 10 weeks, not knowing what the hell's going on with me and kind of panicking that if I move at all, that I'm gonna be making it so much worse. And he was like, oh no, it's fine. This actually happens all the time. Generally, we see it in older people over the age of 80. I've always been a trendsetter. What can I say? Bringing things for the new generation. Yeah, apparently um, a lot of people over 80 get injured and then their body just kind of stops to help heal the injury. Their body stops them from being able to move or go to the toilet. Apparently it wasn't even that weird. And he said, the best thing for it is probably to do some gentle exercise. And that, my friends, is what we're doing today. That's why we're baking a cake on the floor. Okay, we're also baking a cake on the floor because I don't have a kitchen or any space or any like counters or whatnot. But mainly, it's for all the good reasons I just said. Okay, so we have our basic cake batter and you've heard this week's kind of tragic tale, but then it has a happy ending. So now we come to the experimentation part because I do not know how much of this is gonna take to turn the cake batter. Also, I have no idea how long it's gonna need in the microwave, but hey, that's the fun, right? We're gonna need six things, but I only have five of these. I'm aware that a rainbow is seven, but really, who needs two purples? So I only have five of these, so one of them's gonna have to share. Welcome to the microwaving section of the video. Yes, this massive bit of plastic behind me is just done. Covering a hole that we don't like to talk about. I have no idea how long this has to go into the microwave for, so we're all just learning new things together today. Experimentation. Let's try, it's pretty thin, so let's try one minute. Our mini cake. A little bit longer. There you go, mini cake. Come on. Another 30 seconds. Okay, well, as it's as baked as it's gonna get. The thing is with microwave cakes uh, that I've sort of forgotten is that you really need to smooth them because unlike cakes in a regular oven, it's not like the batter just has time to. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Look at it. Stunning. Most beautiful cake you've ever seen. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think one and a half minutes was the winning combination, so let's go again with our orange. I shan't lie, my back does really, 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 really hurt, but I have taken some medication. It's good stuff. Everything's fine. Also, supposedly gentle exercise is great. And I'm, you know, baking in a microwave. Gentle. Blue. Hey. Purple. Okay, I may take a break. 
we have our beautiful microwave cakes and now we're going to stack them one on top of another I think using some kind of cream cheese icing I am trapped on my own sofa until this task is completed yeah I'm just gonna literally throw this in now because it has reached 4 p.m. okay let's decorate this cake and by decorate I mean stack and pray that they stay The lighting changed because the time changed because oh, we had to discuss some things with our builder about cornicing. Cornicing is very important, or I learned recently, Americans call it crown moulding. Observe yeah! my cake. Are you impressed with me? Because I'm impressed with me. I think we should all be impressed. your next video don't forget to click the link in the description and use code JESSICA for 85% off Surfshark and three months extra for free!